This is Twit. Jeff, you seem to take some umbrage at my notion that maybe we're getting <laughs> kind of close to AGI. Uh, first of all, the definition of AGI is pretty squiggly, so I don't, yeah. I don't know if we even know what that means. But uh, but you look at that Gemini video, and I'm sure we'll get maybe our own hands on it sometime soon and, and be able to see how good it is. But it was very very impressive. Uh, do you not agree, Jeff? So Mark Twain said that a machine that would set type would have to think. <laughs> and he uh, wasted his fortune and that's went right. bankrupt and lost his sense oh, of humor. Right. It I is forgot sad, about that. Yes. Investing in the page machine to compete with the linotype. And it didn't need to think. But that's what we think when we see a machine that does something that we did, that we do. And if it can do that, it must be as smart as we are. It must be able to think. Um, and no, I don't think we're anywhere near a machine with general intelligence that can tackle any task. That does not mean that the Gemini demo isn't effing amazing. It's phenomenal that a machine can do what this is. It's great, and we can do all kinds of wonderful things with it, but this anthropomorphization, did I say that after wine? Um, <laughs> that, that if it, you can say like Zunjichrecht, you can say anthropomorphization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I think is fooling ourselves and is the wrong debate. And this is where, where this is where I think I'm becoming a big fan of Jan LeCun, who's in charge of AI at Meta. He's a voice of reason here, saying, "Calm down, everybody. It's a it's a fascinating machine. It can do lots of things. Yes, yes, yes. But it's not. It's he said it maybe get to cat brain or dog brain eventually. Uh, but oh, it's not but this, this Gemini's doing stuff." The no dog could do, no two year old could do in many cases. This is pretty sophisticated recognition uh, response. I mean, it's kind of, I know, again, it's it could be a little bit hoaxed. We don't know how how realistic this is, but if it is this good, uh, that's a little bit uh, interesting. Well, and but, so I think there's a mistake people do. make uh, worse than anthropomorphizing it, which is saying, well, how did it get there and worrying about the process instead of the outcome. And I think... Yes, and I think outcome matters. I was just going to say uh, to Jeff, if you have a computer that can beat anybody at chess, then you have a computer that can beat anybody at chess. You know, right. The fact that it isn't self-aware or that it can't wash the dishes, <laughs> that seems to me, aside from, you know, like like a whole different issue. So I guess the question is, what what is it that we're asking? That's a specific it intelligence. That, it but seems is it general we, intelligence? Can it, it take any that, task? I can't do any task. I'm good at some, <laughs> and I'm crappy at most. So, so, so... At some point, we're going to get to a place, and I think this is what we're, we're foreseeing, where, you know, a computer is less annoying than a person. And it could do everything that the person that you ask the person that, that you would ask the person to do, the computer can do. In which case, it's a it's a functional replacement for a person. No, not not all people, but, you know, the annoying guy in the corner. And it doesn't seem to me that we're that far away. Uh, I, I still think we are, but the, the other the other problem here, and this is Leo's least favorite word of the year. Uh, Riz is the dictionary's favorite word of the year. The, Leo's word, least favorite word of the year is Tesquiel. Oh God! And <laughs> so is, we had bets that uh, you would get that in before halfway through. So I, well I, done. I, <laughs> I, I beat it by five minutes. So uh, Tesquiel is an acronym for the various loony faux philosophies that drive these AI boys who think that it's long-termism, it's effective altruism, it's um, uh, 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 transhumanism, rationalism, and I forget what the E stood for, uh, extropism. Um, or effective and, altruism. And, We've got that too, right? Right, yeah. right. And, and so it's their belief that they are the smartest and most powerful people and that they're going to create machines that are going to be smarter than any of us, including them, and that we owe a debt to the future unborn 10 to the 58th human beings, including those augmented by computers. And really, the people today don't much matter. Our only job is to keep everything going for all those future beings. This is apparently a Larry Page's point of view, the founder of Google. There was a great article in the piece in the New York Times a couple of weeks ago, kind of a history of how we got here in AI, talking about a famous 
uh, fight, you know, a, a, around a campfire in 2015 between Larry Page and Elon Musk. Elon uh, said, we've got to protect ourselves against the AIs. And Larry, Larry said, oh, you're a speciesist. You, you know, it, you, you're trying to protect humans against the next thing and, and they're both nuts they're, <laughs> they're both, both nuts crazy. i think it's just i do a machine, think machine it's just a tool and 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 the problem is the philosophy heads toward utilitarianism and eugenics where they think they're going to exactly make the exactly human being. doc what and do you so think I, what do you think worry doc? about these people so okay but but having crazy people doesn't discount the fact i agree that we have some impressive new technology right don't focus no, on Im all of the side shows but not human like Okay, but the fact that we now have a problem of universities trying to figure out whether their students wrote the paper or a machine wrote the paper, that I mean, that tells you something happened. I mean, something really significant happened. Or it tells you that, that teaching students to write dumb essays all these centuries was a really idiotic thing to do. <laughs> we should teach them to think instead. Doc, where, where do you come down on this? Yeah. I'm very oh, curious. Wow. I've come down in all over the place. Um, <laughs> I come down like an exploded rocket. <laughs> uh, a musk rocket. <laughs> what, what do they call that, Rod? Uh, rapid unexpected. Rapid unscheduled. <laughs> rapid yeah, unscheduled so disassembly. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, I did, uh, on, 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 on the university topic, we had uh, Clay Shirky, who has AI in his title as a vice provost at NYU. Wow. Um, at Indiana University two days ago, um, and it'll be up online soon. I can't uh, wait to watch that. That was a great. He's, get. he's so good. Well, Clay, he's Clay's so been good. Clay disappeared ever since he became an administrator. It used to be we had to quote Clay every two days. I know. And now well, he's he, nowhere. He, so good he, for he had a lot of quotable stuff. I, one of them is most people put engineering at the end of their titles so they'll get a raise, you know, or engineer, <laughs> you know, prompt engineer, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, and he had some really delicious things to say about not only how hard that is, but also, and I think it's an important thing, how almost fun it is to try and navigate all this stuff because we have this fabulous tool. You know, it's like the PC. The PC showed up and all of a sudden everybody could do far more than a mainframe could and did it far better than a mainframe could. And 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 it was fun. I mean, I I love playing with AI. And I think it's, it's just, I like having a playoff between perplexity and chat gpt and bard and and um I, I actually think the the bing uh image creator is actually better than than dolly even though it uses dolly and i've had a lot of fun with that um but i, I agree with jeff that there's there's a eugenic aspect to this i mean what eugenics mm -hmm. sought to do was improve the improve humanity by um by testing everybody they invented iq tests the holders went geez uh, you know, ChatGPT has an IQ of 40 million. Well, people don't have IQs either. I, and my mother was a teacher. My IQ scores had an 80 point range. I hated school. Sometimes I did really well. Other times I did really bad. There's no such thing as an IQ. You can't, you can't, it's not a dipstick or a thermometer that'll measure your intelligence. <laughs> intelligence, is, intelligence is a human quality, like empathy or hate or love or other things. And machines cannot replicate that, okay? We can use machines to do all kinds of wonderful things, but it doesn't mean that they are us. And well said, Doc. It isn't just that we're anthropomorphizing the machines. We're machinizing ourselves by imagining that we could be replicated entirely by, by a machine that, that has you know, <laughs> general intelligence. I don't think it's artificial. It's real. Um, I don't know how general it is. It can't be general enough to be like one of us. You know, we're, it, it's, it, think about this. It's a human quality that we we forget things in seven seconds. You know, we, we don't remember how we started the sentences or ending or how we're going to end the sentences. We start yet somehow we get meaning across. And that's a remarkably human thing. Um, humor is another one. Uh, uh, Brad Templeton, I think it is on Facebook has been trying to get a, um, uh, an AI to do a, a New Yorker cartoon. Uh, even when he feeds it with the right one line it doesn't quite work because mm -hmm. it doesn't get irony. It's that's a human thing. You know, it, it's, so, you know, I, I, I think in, in relief, we will appear to be more human when this thing's done than we did when it started. So this is where our friend David Weinberger, yeah. I think, is so smart. His last book, um, uh, which was uh, Everyday Chaos, I think it was called. It's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful book. And, and what, what David says is going to drive us nuts 
is that we get better predictions out of the machine than we can make because it has so much data and it can it can and analyze it in a way that never could be analyzed before. However, it brings no explanation. Mm. And we expected that we had explanations in the world. We thought we explained things. That's what journalists do. That's what novelists do. That's what historians do. But we're actually full of crap. We think we can explain things. And those things that we call accidents or miracles are just things we can't explain. Yeah, but if I ask so a machine, machine what the weather's going to be, I don't care how it got to it's going to rain tomorrow as long as it rains tomorrow. Well, why do I need to know how it got there? Because you're the one who brought up artificial general intelligence as if there's such a thing as intelligence, where I think Doc is exactly right. That's Steve, Steve we talked about this a few months ago, and... You, your conclusion was we are nothing more than thinking machines, so why is it impossible to think a machine couldn't do it? I do believe that, and I think everybody is impatient and that in five years we're going to have an entirely different terrain than we do today. I mean, we're all wondering what this is that has just begun to emerge, and I would argue we have no idea, but it... but. It's exactly as you say, Leo, my my belief is that we're going to create something which which is very much capable and it won't be biological and it won't work with, you know, neurons and synapses and and, you know, biochemistry the way our brain does. But I don't see any big bridge. I, I, I guess I'm I'm not seeing that there has to be a soul if you want to use that term, in order to have intelligence. I think you'd need a, 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 an astounding amount of complexity, and we're currently shooting up a complexity curve at a very high speed. And I, I think in, in a few years, you know, if we had a similar conversation, you know, there would be a, a lot more expectation and and... Uh, I, I'm not worried. I just don't want to put these machines in control of our future and our, you know, our physical destiny. Because... Don't give them the nukes for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, and don't give them the authority to write humor because it's astonishing. I never realized how complicated and subjective humor was until I tried to get uh, chat GPT to write me space jokes for this week in space. And it, they were miserable. Really worse than your own? Because that's worth the pretty worth low the bar. mine and Bennett serves. <laughs> okay, okay. I get it. Listeners of this program get an ad free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, and more. Go to twit.tv slash Club Twit. And thanks for your support.